spawn a national rivalry. Tradition for one, in 63, Duke's Jeff Mullins met the great Cassie Russell. Today, you add a couple of high-profile coaching minds like Steve Fisher and Mike Krzyzewski. Mix in some talented seniors, Duke's Cherokee Parks, Michigan's Ray Jackson and Jimmy Keene. Then throw in future stars such as Maurice Taylor and Ricky Price. That's a good blend for a rivalry ripe with emotion. Pizza Hut presents the college basketball tip-off. Brought to you by Pizza Hut, where great food and fun times bring people together. By Buick, makers of the concept car you can drive, the 1995 Riviera. By Sprint, we've got everything you need, local, long distance, and cellular, to let you be there now. And by the new Gillette Sensor XL, with micro fins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. Venerable Cameron Indoor Stadium is the site for tonight's matchup as Duke hosts Michigan in the Pizza Hut College Basketball Tip-Off. Hello, everyone. I am Tim Brando. December intersectional rivalries, awfully special in college basketball. And tonight, Bill, two very talented teams. Both clubs have great talent, but when I talked to Steve Fisher, I asked him, would you prefer big guys or perimeter people? Better to have good young kids. Doesn't matter where they play it. I think we both have that. Uh, we're going to have our freshmen go against guys like Cherokee Parks and Eric Meek, who are seniors. That scares me a little bit. There's a lot more talent on this team, but one of the guys that right out of the gate has been a top-notch performer, Maurice Taylor. Tough, aggressive, good down on the box, Tim. Obviously, this Duke team has been successful through the years because they've had chemistry. That's why Mike krzyzewski has been to seven Final Fours in the last nine years. Who better to put his team in perspective? I think we're, we're very similar in the fact that we're, we're both trying to develop chemistry, uh, substitution patterns, things like that. And their base is uh, uh, King, Jackson, Fife, our base is uh, Parks and Meek. Um, it'll be interesting to see uh, whose veterans do a little bit more uh, in the ball game. And we're, we're both searching for that, our identity this year. Getting those minutes, though, for a player like Trojan Langdon coming off the bench. Look at what he did against GW. Well, that's how deep they are with Wojo at the point, Price on the wing. This youngster can shoot those deep ones as well. The starting lineups when we return as Cameron goes crazy again for Duke and Michigan. For an indoor stadium in Durham, North Carolina, where 91 consecutive non-ACC games have been won by the Duke Blue Devils. And let's take a look at our Toyota starting lineups for Michigan. Ray Jackson and Steve Fisher told us since his freshman year, he never realized that he could become the leader he now is. And he's got to step up tonight. He and Jimmy King have to perform admirably to carry the rookies. For the Blue Devils of Duke Cherokee Parks, who is the hardest working player on the floor for Coach K. And Timmy Depp, the big three-point shooter, over 66% from out there, drags the D. When we come back, we'll have the opening tip-off as the ACC meets the Big Ten in the Carolinas. Filled to capacity yet again at Cameron Indoor Stadium in the last Meetings between these two have been uh, memorable, to say the least. One, of course, for a national championship where Duke was concerned. They lead the series 11 to 4, and they won that game 73-63 last year. Steve Fisher, what a remarkable job he's done. He's been to three Final Fours in five years and has a national title in 89. And Mike Krzyzewski, the Wizard of Krzyzewskiville. He didn't buy any pizza tonight, though. The opening tip is controlled to Duke. Michigan, Miniman. Meek down on the low block. Capel with the ball fake. And the Duke. Oh, that's the one area they want to keep them out of. The move to the middle, the elbow, it opens up their passing lanes. Duke. Dugan Fife is not the typical point guard, not a penetrator, 
He's a distributor of the ball, and many times that can cause problems for Michigan, particularly with a team like Duke that tries to take everything away. And, Timmy, there's your leadership by Parks down on the box. Great denial and then the deflection off of the Wolverines. Steve Wojciechowski, the outstanding freshman from Severna Park on the floor. There's Meek flashing to the ball, and that one was kicked. Did you notice the double screen they run for the center? That's the confidence they have in the Chief. Boy, a couple of years ago, Bill, you and I were here, and everyone was wondering, could Cherokee Parks step up? Well, mm -hmm. I, I guess he did. Got the answer. That one last touched by Ricky Price. It'll be controlled to the Wolverines. Michael K wanted a deflection, a double tick. It didn't get it. And right now, Wojo Timmy is going to rag the ball. Some people call it ratting the ball. Make Fife use as many dribbles, use the clock, and make the offense start out further on the floor. Really similar to the pattern that Krzyzewski used against Jalen Rose. Absolutely. Jackson with the follow, rejected by Parks. Wojciechowski leads the break. Pretty good look to Price. Ooh. But he was in too deep. A little bit extra, too. Loose ball collected by Michigan and Gerard Ward with his first rebound. Jackson ripped by Capel. Mm. Now, I don't know if you noticed, Tim, on the last trip down, Michigan took a shot, and Duke just deflected the ball out. That's what Mike wants. If they can't rebound, deflect it, let the guards run it down. He's impressed with their offensive rebounding. Ward for three. Whew. Gerard Ward, the freshman from Clinton, Mississippi. Coming along is oh. what Steve Fisher said, starting to find himself. Drive, draw, and dish. Yes. The dump down to Parks. Meek with the answer, but he was out of bounds. He is banging the glass, though. They've got to keep him off, Michigan. Hard to believe Eric Meek actually thought and considered strongly redshirting this year. He probably would have taken over for Cherokee Parks in the middle the following year, but he made the decision to stay with the club, and Coach K always allows the players to make that call. And the reason, nice cut and pass. Good basketball. Jackson. Don't without it. And the reason Meek sort of was on the cusp he started to be graded one, two, or three in every practice and felt confident enough to perform. Capel. A three-pointer for Capel to tie the game. A very capable Jeff. That's what drags the D out. The three perimeter guys can knock down the deep one. You know, it's amazing how many players on the floor have fathers that are coaches. Capel is one. Ray Jackson is another. Mm -hmm. Football and track, I guess. Yeah, for LBJ. The big thing for Steve Fisher is their maturity on this end. Take good shots, therefore they balance the floor. Duke can't get out on the run. Here's King on the dribble drive. Got a little bang in there. Pretty good action from Price on the defensive end. Oh, Wojciechowski really directs traffic. Meek, a power move, down it, and a foul. Oh. With that move, inappropriate. This is not humble of heart, set up by the high-low, the ability to curl, NBA style, and Eric with the strong send it in. And that's because they're concerned about the dump down in Cherokee Park. When you've got as many young players on the floor as Michigan has to start this game, it's awfully important that you hang around the first five or six minutes. Get to that first TV timeout, Bill, with some composure. And that was a message that this is a good play by Parks. You see, this could turn into one of those nightmarish sequences for Steve Fisher. He understands that he has to exude confidence for this young club. But what you're saying is don't call a timeout. Yeah. I don't think he needs it. I think they're playing very well offensively, getting good shots. That's the key. Don't rush Duke into easy ones at the other end. Those explosions can happen very quickly at Cameron Indoor. What a pump fight. Pump, put it on the floor, Ricky. That is a four-point trip for the Blue Devils. And they've hit six unanswered. Use some clock until you get a good one. The end of the year, Michigan.
Michigan's going to be awfully good. And one of the rookies taking that shot, pretty darn good performer. King trying to keep it alive, but it's ripped down by Price. Taylor has confidence from deep. Parks. Oh, oh Cherokee. Lefty. Blow past Maurice Taylor for that one. Well, when you can shoot the ball, you can go to the tin with the bounce. Look at Ward working. Uh, that's the impatience they've exhibited. They point the ball around. For Pika, that was explaining to the Duke kids. You've got to beat the guy to the spot, and that time, good interior defense. Maktar Inja has come into the game to replace Taylor. The next dead ball, that TV timeout will be forthcoming, and I'm sure Steve Fisher wouldn't mind seeing it right about now. Now, you've got to stay at home defensively if you're Michigan. You can't gamble where you pinch and your guy gets free. Good shape up by me. Nice look to Price. Gerard Ward there to help, deflected off Price. It will belong to the Wolverines when we come back. Mike Krzyzewski's club out to an early edge at home. Sets things up. Mikos to the goal. And, of course, Parks with the dribble. They end up with the shape up in the lane. A turnover, but all set up by those prior two offensive moves. A 9 nothing spreading. But Jackson is there to answer. Well, out of the timeout, some composure and some patience on the offensive end for the Wolverines. And who had the ball? The two seniors. Good, solid basketball. Going without it. Duke will sneak, sneak a peek. You've got to be ready to back up and deliver. Ward with some help, but he's guilty of the push against Eric Meek. If you remember the UConn game, they got some back cuts for Ray Allen. Yeah. The Illinois game, I think it was Richard King got some back cuts. Duke gambles defensively. You can make them pay on occasion. The jumper for Capel. He's got a staggered double on one or a single on the other. Good defense by Michigan. Yeah, King got right through that pick that was... Uh, being set up, and here's a steal by five. Hold on. And Jimmy King up the jams. Jimmy King. A little Jimmy Jam King. <laughs> <laughs> He's been doing a little jamming for a few years. Defense, something I think by March, Michigan is going to be terrific because they learn how to guard Steve Fisher style. There's the double team of Meek. Very unique to college basketball. So is that. Jared E. Barnes with a three. Been outstanding from three-point range. This is a guy now nine of 13 for the season in three-pointers. He has five. And Mike says he's not even thinking catching and shooting, but you can see defensively what a dilemma. And Meek down on the box, you just can't get down and help as much with the big guy looming out there. Injai in the game along with Crawford and Jackson, and the dump down to Maktar Injai. Finally, some offensive glass, and it happens for King, and Jimmy puts it in with a left hand. He has four, and it's a three-point Blue Devils lead. Second shots, one of the dilemmas when you play Michigan. Collins in at the wing, they keep bringing in perimeter shooters. Collins and Trojan Langdon also in the game. Oh, he's wide open, Capel wasted the bounce. Trojan, a runner. Langdon. Outstanding, a prolific scorer out of Anchorage, Alaska. Got a lot of media attention simply because there haven't been that many great high school prospects coming out of Alaska. And it's tough to clean off the snow <laughs> on the blacktop, <laughs> isn't it? A great baseball player. Nice double here, selective, and look at the recovery by Capel and Collins. Trying to get through that double team. He took the extra step, did Ray Jackson. All hustle defensively. For the Wolverine, Talking about 30, Langdon with the Padres, I'm told he doesn't have a scholarship here. He's considered a walk-on. The yep. Padres paying the freight. That could be another story altogether, given the state of baseball at this point. Five-point lead for the Blue Devils. Nice look. Cable to Parks. They're going to get open with the double. Langdon can't get it to go. Cleared by Macy Obaston, number 30 in goal for the Wolverines. They will use a number of combinations, trying to get as many minutes for these young players as possible. Big-time rebounder. There's the slap. There's the steal. Here is the finish. Vertical. Yep. Collins will get 
give credit for it. Maceo Baston, goaltending. Traditionally, Mike Krzyzewski makes you pay. Turnovers, long rebounds, the leak out. Chris didn't get the bounce he wanted, but the kiss, it counts. Collins, of course, uh, had the broken bone in his right foot, was unable to practice until 10 days ago, getting his first real minutes against GW. Nice gamble by Langdon there. Look at Parks with the support. Injai over Newton. Blakeney is also in the game as the Blue Devils have made wholesale substitutions short of this guy, what Cherokee. What a secondary break, huh? Four on two for Jackson. Dumps it to Injai. A little too unselfish that time. Should have gone right with the pass. Crawford, a pull-up. Oh, the iron unkind Ooh. to Crawford. It's mid-season. Langdon. That's his spot. That's his favorite spot on the floor. And Blakeney did a nice job of finding it. To be defensively, you're taught to go back, get in the three-second area, and then come identify. Duke has three people on the perimeter, and then adds Cherokee from deep. It's awful tough to defend. In the two sequences that we've had, already some explosions for Duke. Michigan is not playing poorly, but again, just getting through prior to the time that you get a timeout. You never know when that spurt might come. Langdon doing it in this sequence, while Cherokee Parks did the honors early on. The largest lead of the game. Six players have already scored for Duke. Duke with a 10-point lead. Tim Brando, Bill Raftery, happy to have you with us on Raycon as Duke and Michigan get with it. And the Blue Devils are scorching the nets. Ward with an ugly shot and the ball loose on the floor. Retrieved by Blakeney. Boy, oh, you're harsh. Unattractive. Out of bounds, last touch by Blakeney and, and Blake, as they turn it over. Now, here's a kid you mentioned to me today, out of the Matha. Everybody thought he would be a terrific performer, then had the knee problem. And well, Morgan Wooten said it. Uh, I mean, he has had some great guards at the Matha High School, the legendary coach there. And he said when Blakeney was coming out, he may, may be the best he's ever had in high school. It's been tough for him to get minutes at Duke. Uh, the great front inside by Newton. Duke will try and slide through screen, stay at home on their own. That's a tough shot under duress. Chris Collins plays D better than his dad. Wide open, can't leave it. And that's the key. The Duke looks are much more attractive than Michigan's. He has cold threes. They're from way out. Comes down wet and damp. 13-point lead for the Blue Devils. Baston flashes. Now, you look at this Michigan team, they are without the point guard on the floor. Well, this is where I think they can get the ball inside and take advantage of their size, but you just can't shoot quickly. Nobody in position to rebound. Collins taking the baseline. Meek. As it's stripped by Maceo Bastin. Those basketballs illustrate where the points are coming from as Duke shoots 71 percent, Bill. This is a 9-0 run. Michigan is now 0 for 5, their last five shots during this 9-0 spurt. Five 
Patrick is back in the game. They really needed to get him back on the floor. Out of bounds, last touch by Jackson. Number 24, Jimmy King, back into the lineup for the Wolverines. Replaces number 32, Jerome. Bill Raftery hasn't gone anywhere. We're just trying to find him a headset that'll work. All right, Timmy. <laughs> I'm back. You're back. <laughs> Important uh, Michigan now on the brink stops essential and how they address their offense. They are a little befuddled and the rush is on. Patience. Here's the double, the kick. Look at Meek banging it. Baston with a nice job with the leg. Newton again, an open shot. Mm. They just continue to create open shots. And this run extends itself. A 17-point lead for the Blue Devils. Well, you've heard of spacing with the ability to shoot deep. They stretch. Very tough to go double the length of distance to cover. It was awfully hard. Good back cut by King. They didn't get it to him. Lightney slapping it away from Jackson. Just disrupting Michigan's offense. And Taylor serious. with a tremendous spin move on the low block. His first basket of the game. Collins can't get it. Newton and Meek keeping it alive. That's an over the back against Greg Newton, the sophomore, who hails from Ontario. One of the few Canadians to come through college basketball in recent years. Although Duke had another one, as you see, Jeff Gable coming into the game. Remember the name Danny Mahar? He was one of the real stars of that group that had Dawkins and Amaker, the foundation for Mike Krzyzewski's run for all of well, those final four. Michigan needs a little run now, and the last time they went low to accomplish it. Tough matchup for Capel with Mitchell. Good shot. Look at this move again. Oh! Drawing the he's... foul from Meek. That's just a, an isolation to take advantage of. He is a talented guy. Michigan sent me some tapes prior to Maui, and I kept hearing the PA announcer say Taylor Block. Taylor goal, Taylor assist. Look at his bounce to ecstasy. Everything but to send it in. He did it on the box that time with the left hand. There's not much doubt that among the freshmen that have come in, this youngster out of Henry Ford High School in Detroit, uh, he has already asserted himself as the leader of this new class. Well, they got one, two, and three, Mr. Basketball. Willie Mitchell, Travis Conlon. Maurice Taylor. I'd say they yeah. have the state in their hands. And this is a program that is also recruiting very well nationally. They've got the Texas connection. Mm -hmm. And now they've been able to go into Mississippi and get someone of the caliber of Gerard Ward. Ball reversal, not a good look by me. Got to get it up high towards the goal. Taylor doing it on both ends now. Shoot it, Dugan. And the freshman Dugan. off the bench, Willie Mitchell. Out of Pershing High in Detroit, gets the bucket. 28-17 as the Wolverines try to forge a comeback. By Furry on selfish inside the 15-footer, you got to take a bad post D here by Bastard. Bail out. A slap away. Five hits the deck. Loose ball run down by Wojciechowski. Bastard is down on the floor. I think the perspiration, he did a split. Wojo and Fife, two guys that offer up the family property. Anything on the floor they get after, and Bastin hustling to get involved, ended up spread eagle. Yeah, you can see he's in some pain. Well, right now, the kind of game that Michigan needs is a scrappy, hustling kind of they gotta match the spirit and emotion of Duke and and you could see from that replay Bill that what you mentioned is absolutely accurate five off the deck mm -hmm. where the perspiration had been left and then Baston just slipped and that was a stretch uh, the likes of which many first basemen will remember mm -hmm. during the course of a game it's okay if you're expecting it yep it's when it happens I think he just stretched some of the lower extremities well, you can call them whatever you want. Uh, obviously, the Fab Five that everyone remembers is something that, uh, at this stage, Steve Fisher would just as soon like to forget. But these youngsters are fabulous in their own respective manners. Travis Conlon is a tremendous shooter. 
And you talk about the 91 class, the leftovers are Jackson and King. That's pretty good stuff. A lot of valedictorians when you think of it. These guys could name it. Uh, great talent. The new kids, I thought Steve Fisher's comments were they'll all start at some point during their career. They're not the Fab Five. And I, it, when you I look at going back to 82, that's uh, way before my time, obviously. <laughs> back when Bill Frieder got that baby going. And of course, Johnny Orr set it all up at Michigan. The great teams that he had back in the late 70s. And Bill Frieder took that over. So they, they built from within with respect to their coaching staffs. And Baston is trying to make his way up to the trainers and team doctors taking a good close look. Maceo is uh, out of Dallas, Texas, one of the Texas connections we were talking about earlier. And this is what you love about the Duke audience. They respect players, they respect programs, and they get after you too, and gingerly as he walks off. The good news is he's able to put some weight on both of those knees. Mm -hmm. I mentioned a few minutes ago that this team, as they mature defensively, their offense will get better. And that's part of the growth. Being in Maui those three days against high-profile teams that went over Utah, not too many people said anything about Rick Majerus' team. It was a great win for Michigan. Well, when you stop and look at the... The victory over Tulane. Mm -hmm. I mean, at, at the time, I'm sure a number of people in the Motor City were concerned that Tulane would beat them on a neutral floor. But then after Tulane dismantled Coach Knight in Indiana in the aftermath of that, suddenly uh, that close game won by Michigan is a, is a quality win. I'm sure that he's able to get organized and, if not tonight, get back to the next game. We'll pass along any information we get as soon as we're told. Wojciechowski. King brings it down. Need some solid approaches on this end now. Good ball reversal, get the screen. Taylor tonight, he's got his guy in there. If they, now, that's the lack of communication. They talk about chemistry. It's just not the understanding yet because of integrating new people. And the teacher in him is going to come out this year. Yeah. Steve is terrific as you watch him in practice with his staff. And they really get after their guys in a positive way. Jay Smith, Brian Dutcher, and Scott Perry, they demand things that will help them later in the year, particularly on this end. On the wing, Meek again on the offensive glass as Price couldn't connect. There's that dribble drive dish. Parks cleared by King. Duke doing a nice job of rotating back on defense. Nice spin out by Taylor. See, the ball has to be timed when the man is free, and that's where the offense is out of sync. Mitchell. Tough shot, but he stays with it and gets it to go. Well, he showed you his ability to slash to the goal. And rebounding again. Penetrating the look at this kid in the thick. Rice. You can't draw it any better, Tim. And Jai. Over the back. Right. Jeff, whose dad is now at Old Dominion. And at a and T. I'm sure checking it out. He's not playing or getting a tape of it. Made most of the games last year in their great run. Speaking of runs, Michigan on an 8-0 run of their own after falling down by as many as 17. Can't say enough about Meek, though, his aggressive style and nature. What a compliment to the Chief down there. A little staggered screen for Capo. See how they make you pinch and then dish? Pretty. Rice was trying to cut to the goal. Now it's Mitchell loose with Capo defending. Good pull up, too, without the charge. That has been worked on. Duke steps in beautifully. And here come the Wolverines. Down by only seven, 10 unanswered for Michigan. Rebounding clearly with Duke and mostly on the offensive glass. And they get Parks low when they need a good one, huh? And you may have walked, yeah. On the gather. Our officials tonight, Jim Burr, Ted Valentine, Steve Wellmer, three of the best in the business. Mike Krzyzewski will go back to his bench and get Newton back into the game. Now, Michael has another pet dog at home, and he got it from Jersey. Bob Brennan gave it to him, a friend of P.J. Blissimo. Guess what the dog's name is? 
Cameron Indoor Dog. <laughs> uh, you think that man needs help? Well, his daughter's finally convinced him to get a pet dog. Yeah, there's a pet player yep. for the Wolverines. Post oh, with hell. strength and finish. Mo. Taylor now with five. And he's liable to get a foul here because he's body in parks. Got a experienced officials checking it out. Five. It's caught with the reach in against Wojciechowski. They got enough McDonald's and Americans out here, huh? They really do. You know, you look at Dugan Fife, Bill, and I think with last year's team, the Michigan team, Dugan Fife's emergence really allowed Michigan to become a Final Eight team. They, of course, lost that regional final to Arkansas. But clearly, his role has to change with this year's team. Uh, Steve felt it out in Hawaii that he's got to be more vocal. And also, I think he's got to be a threat, Tim. Good ball movement. Look at the reaction. He caused the wall. Great defense, that trip. Now, they got to build on that. Eight turnovers for the Blue Devils during this Michigan run. The Blue Devils have been careless with the basketball on the offensive end. So maybe inexperience on that end. Yeah, absolutely. And we, and we talk about that inexperience for Duke. It is found in their backcourt. Little flex cut and wide open. That's good D. Great move by Jackson, Jackson. Duke. When you get loose and are able to use those one-on-one -on -one skills, it makes a big difference. And this run has now become a 14-point run for the Wolverines. Michael Krzyzewski said no greater hunger than the hunger to get better. And here they do not get to the ball side. They're going to have to switch it. They're going to have to pull the defender, or he's going to have to run and get in the inside in the three-second area to stop that kind of flex screen and cut. The Duke defensive philosophy many times has to do with overplaying and ball you man theory. And if you don't practice it, you're going to have some problems. And that time, Blakeney was, uh, was guilty. We're in a little double screen for the Chief out of the timeout. This is the end. They've had some problems defensively. And this is where they should start. Nice deflection by Newton. And the run out to Blakeney. Ooh, everything but, huh? Yep, Maktar and Jai. See, now, you have to time that if you're that size. Let the ball go up. He could have actually stopped and settled if he had hustled down a mistake on one end, and all of a sudden your defense does not counter and get back. But you're going to see Njai come into the picture. Now, he came on the run. He could have two pivot foot stop and then projected up. Maktar Njai was a little slow to develop last year, and you could hardly blame him. Uh, this was a young man that the NCAA decided could not play at Wake Forest. He received, according to the NCAA, a significant recruiting edge through improper actions by an interpreter during the recruiting process. So they allowed him to go someplace else. That someplace else <laughs> just happened just to be happened Michigan. To much where, to the where the brand of Wake, huh? Where the rich get richer. But, you know, one of the languages he didn't speak, he speaks five, was the NCAA language. And that's why he had to <laughs> spend some time off. Let's see if Duke gets some action. They've started to screen a little bit. Get some people free on the box. They post up. Here's the back screen. Mitchell throw and a clear for King. Pretty basketball. Yep. And the Wolverines seemingly are going to their experienced players for isolations time and time again. Imagine it was 28 to 11. Then a timeout by Michigan since that time. Duke has not scored. Unforced turnover by Jeff Capel. They've got to value the ball a little bit better. Duke only averages 16 TOs a game. who you are and what you can do. Don't be in a hurry. The lead is baseline. Duke's going to seal it off and make trap you. The catch and turn and then see what you can do or give it back out. Plenty of time in the shot clock sequence. Six and a half minutes, Bill, since Duke scored. It's not Weber down there. Bill. Look at me, cold off. And here comes the double. Now you got to read and reverse. Good ball movement. A runner for Langdon. It's an air ball. And numbers. Michigan looks for the lead here. Taylor. Oh, my. What a move by Maurice Taylor. That Taylor can make my suit anytime. Mike Krzyzewski wanted to travel. The referee's assuming he didn't have control, but Mike venting his emotion. Four on two. Not, I, I think he's madder at his players for 
you're not getting back. But you would have to question the non-call here. They say, I would, I would suggest he's right. But injury and insult together. Coach K getting the attention of the officials and picking up a technical foul. Well, he's strong. You know that. I mean, you can regale us with his success stories and his victories in NCAA Final Fours and championships, but you don't get there without some mental toughness. Well, what this must do to the Michigan confidence, though, to have been down 28 to 11 and run off 20 unanswered at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And, and the, your point, though, the seniors stepping up is a valid one. Jackson and King doing some nice things, whether it's on their own or making the play to others. Here's the dump down to Taylor. Not bad having him in there either. Well, they run <laughs> everything through him in their half-court set, don't they? Oh, well, and they shake in the head. Motown. Little attitude. Yeah. In the big A. But you, you've got to deny that post pass. Duke generally very good at that. And they got the little, well, I call that a small change with the big bodies whacking as Maurice tanks the Jeep. Two on Maurice Taylor. It'll be triggered in underneath. Well, there's one way to stop this guy. Now, he drags you outside. You can see a little more than a nickel dime, huh? Yeah. I might give him a 5 or $10. Out of bounds. It belongs to Michigan. As Price turns it over. That's 11 turnovers now against Duke. And you can see both coaches getting the ear mm -hmm. of an official. It's Valentine on one end and Jimmy Burr on the other. And they're not sending Valentines to either official. <laughs> So what about those December pre-conference matchups? I, I just think guys are more confident in their position. Schools realize what they have. You go out and find out how good your players are. Security is part of it. Plus the talent level that you've got to seek and find out how far you can go. Much better now. Park jams it up. They push it a little with me. Watch a house key. He and King got hooked up. And I believe they whistled Jimmy King that time. Now King was setting himself up with a smaller guy, and it wasn't a quick read by Michigan. Ray Jackson had to bring it down, make that little post entry. 17 fouls now against the Wolverines. Right, let's see where the ball is. You know, no question to bang, but the ball stayed at the top. Ray should have dribbled that ball down to the wing, dumped it baseline, and King's got to finish. Usually you get frustrated when it doesn't happen your way. That time Jimmy King gets tagged. So Duke is in the bonus. The remainder of the half, 17 fouls against the Wolverines. And this drought now continues for eight and a half minutes for the Blue Devils. They haven't been able to buy a point, not even at the free throw line. And one of the things Michigan has not done is shot the ball well early in the year. Much better shot selection. That steps up your defensive play as well when you knock them down. Look at the defense all in the blue. Good cut. Jackson, the reversal. Tough shot. And the follow by Maktar Njai. They crash. You got to get a body, and then you're able to run. Seven-point cushion for the Wolverines. Steps again. Well, they're really honing in on steps from the perimeter, whether it be a guard, and particularly the size of Cherokee Parks. You can't hide those puppies, huh? Steps, three-second calls, too. You'll see more of this year. Point of emphasis. Pass, look at the fill by Jackson. Now the slice cut, and look at nice play by Meek on the read. That's another steal by stepping into the passing lane. Wojciechowski, they leave him wide open. And it still won't fall for Duke. As we now approach a nine-minute drought for the Blue Devils. Good shot, though. Had everybody organized for defensive balance. I'd go inside and get some damage. Get to the foul line if you can. Jackson stripped by Wojciechowski. Granted, Ricky, he's electrifying. He's been quiet. That finally ends the drought for Duke at 9 minutes and 15 seconds. They get Enjai with the show. A fan favorite because Mocho offers it up. You were there when Mike was saying the effort. Oh, yeah. He expends in 
in the high school, he used to go to a workout club in the morning. Then go to school, practice and come home, and they have a hill behind the house and do his defensive slides. Son of a son of a longshoreman, outstanding family in Severna Park, where he played at Cardinal Gibbon. And there's the old uh, La Cucaracha hip check, huh? You can't let it go. La Cucaracha. I thought that was uh, after the game. Cha -cha. Well, that's a little later. But Enjai trying to help, and you don't camouflage those particular plays with officials of this caliber. I'd say Wojo's a little angry at this point. Duke, I think, is a bit embarrassed over this drought and the turnovers, and they really were careless with the basketball on the offensive end a number of times. And the ranking continues right here, making fight work. Everybody else steps up to denial. Five on the floor with Jackson. Bastin in two, which is a great thing to see, Tim. Gerard Ward is on the floor with Jimmy King, and there's Bastin up at the top. You better check him out. Great finisher. Five. And that pressure finally causes the turnover. That's what Coach K wanted to see in defense of Dugan Five tonight. That's 10 turnovers recorded by Michigan. And Ward really not reading what Fife wanted to do, and that again is the problem of integrating people. Dribble drive, try and hit the wing or get it. Well, they go to the box set. It might be a dump low. Wojo, Demik draws the foul from Gerard Ward. Now, you sit at clinics during your coaching career, and guys come up with intricate sets, screens, bumps, how to go without the basketball. The game is breaking down the defense with a dribble in a positive fashion, draw people, and then slip the pass. So Meek had the hands ready, and Wojo, extraordinary at finding the hole, the gap. Well, all the accolades that I heard about Wojciechowski, though Duke uh, has experienced some growing pains in this in this half, and we have a lane violation. A little redo. Michigan okay. getting into the pain a bit too quickly. I'll do it again. I saw Wojo up at the McDonald's All-American game, and, and he, for three days, did the same thing, just as aggressive, hard-nosed, competitive. Jack Curran was his coach up there. Cody was just an extraordinary performance. Duke's got to be ready. Michigan should have in their bag a pass to half court without throwing it out of bounds. You don't want to give them a chance again. And then maybe another a, a quick bouncing shot. Three seconds a, lo a long time. Quick outlet, and we've come to the end of the half. Had something ready, though. A half of runs and the technical foul for Coach K. 35-33, our score, Michigan, with a two-point advantage here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. The Pizza Hut College Basketball Tip-Off is brought to you by Pizza Hut, where great food and fun times bring people together. By Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. And by State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Halftime activities coming up here on Raycon after we return from your local station. In a game of uh, serious runs, there were two tremendous runs for Duke early to get them as many as 17 points where a cushion was concerned. And then Michigan went off on a 20 to nothing run of their own to secure the lead. Let's take a look at our Gillette Sensor XL halftime stats, and you'll see the numbers. Both of them mirror images of one another from the floor. Both teams turning it over a time of two, and not many free throws for either club. Three-point shooting, the Blue Devils launching more from beyond the arc than the Wolverines who have been relying on getting the ball inside for their productivity. On the glass, Michigan stepped it up during that run. Duke had held a very large lead earlier. Trojan Langdon, again coming off the bench, he had 17 the other night against George Washington. They're going to have to get 
him more of these kinds of shots, Phil. Push the ball up the floor. Very essential that they rebound to do that. The spread makes it tough for Michigan to cover both out and on the box. Duke, nine minutes and 15 seconds without a hoop, and then this travel that went uncalled, which led to Taylor's dunk to give the Wolverines the lead and a technical foul for Coach K as the Wolverines secured as many as a five-point lead at one point. We're at halftime. The Wolverines clinging to a two-point lead on the road at Cameron. Second half action of the Pizza Hut College basketball tip-off is brought to you by Pizza Hut, where great food and fun times bring people together. By Toyota and their full line of quality cars and trucks. Toyota, I love what you do for me. By Discus Athletic Activewear. Discus Athletic, the way America plays. And by Visa. When you come to the games here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, bring your Visa card. Because at Cameron, they will take it to the hoop, but they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Along with the Sprint Master, mm. Bill Raftery. Boy, that was tremendous. You got up uh, those stairs back up to our perch pretty quickly. It's 35-33, Tim Brando and Bill Raftery, and they're your leading scorers for Michigan. Maurice Taylor, obviously, is a talent that you're going to hear about for a long time to come. But Jimmy King and Ray Jackson got Taylor his shots with their dribble penetration. Solid basketball by them, and Taylor, the problem for him this half, Meek, Newton, and Parks, no foul problems. And for... The Blue Devils, Langdon off the bench, as we mentioned, coming off an outstanding effort against GW. Cherokee Parks held in check. Good defensive job where he's concerned. Ricky Price with only Watch four. Watch him now. He, he had an unsettling first half for him. He got caught under the backboard a couple of times. Michigan has to be concerned about his ability. Original starting lineups on the floor for both teams as we open the second half. Reversing the ball. A little more solid each game on the offensive end. Parks with a nice front, a little more aggressive. Taylor over me. Jackson keeps it alive with Ward. Playing a little pogo stick and finally falling away. It's Jackson that puts it in. You better go under there protected. The big fellas are scraping and banging. Start a little stack screen and then a diagonal for Parks. Well, that pass was oh, did he, he split that, that double team? Ball. But the pass led him to the drop step and then he stepped between defenders. Big time move by the Chief. Look at Meek now with Taylor. Yeah, he's got the hole. So they're going to have to respect him. You know, the game still comes down to matchups that coaches want to exploit. And, and that, there is a good example of uh, the fact that Taylor may command double teams every time he gets the ball in the low block. I think he's potentially so good that only a bad seamstress could mess up that Taylor. <laughs> he is active, knows how to get himself open on that box. And look at this pass. King had slipped. But you know, he slipped on the same spot on the floor that Baston mm -hmm. had the splits with earlier and was forced to leave the game. Now, Wojo's trying to jam everything up off a of fight. Fight's going to have to make him pay eventually. A jump hook nice that time. will go down. Nice move for Ward. That's his little patented release down on the box. Well, Steve Fisher had been waiting for a breakout game for Gerard Ward. At this point, he'd like to just see a breakout half. Now, they played the high side yeah. and paid for it. One little bounce, freed up. Jeff Capel. He has seven. This is a team that bounces to ecstasy. Good, good value of the bounce. By the way, Amacio Baston, who did return after slipping down, does have a slight sprain of the left knee, we're told. Let's see more playing time. Oh, oh the window pane for Mo as he uses the glass. That's a surface kiss. You're going away for a long time. Maurice Taylor has 11. Pretty little dish here. Parks, he just makes it work, does he? Capel, very alert with the delivery tone. 41-39, pace of the second half. Awfully inviting early on. A steal by Capel. Rejected by King. And now numbers. Four on two. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it, 
worked out. Unbelievable plays, both ends, two very capable performers not coming up with exactly what they had planned. People's got to go strong to me to the goal. Maurice Taylor put it down, and now oh, Wojciechowski oh. loses it. And King with a magnificent oh. deuce after the pass from Dugan Fife. Fife down on all fours, scrappy matching Wojo's feistiness. They do leak out. 45-39, Michigan by six. No double this time, they stay at home. Pretty. But they allow Price to get through. Meet, count it, and a foul. Well, we talked about Ricky Price being electrifying. He's had three opportunities around the goal to show his talent, has been unable to convert. But that time, Meek stepped into the goal to provide a lift. Right here, the concern when you play Duke is all of the perimeter guys can use that dribble. And right here, you see the flare? Doesn't get the right English on the kiss, but Meek, strong and effective. Jimmy Keene picked up the foul, his second. And you see Price, during the course of not only the first half, but the second half, Bill, we've seen a number of players slipping on the floor. It's awfully warm in this mm -hmm. building, no air conditioning. And uh, I, mean, I think there's some perspiration still on the floor. King rejected by me. Oh, what a follow! What a follow by Gerard Ward. Getting down the floor was half of it, huh? Did not come back down once he jumped. <laughs> Great block negated. Good ball movement. You can watch this game and not need the 30-minute workout. Injai takes that air ball out of the sky. Numbers. Good job recovered by two. Fight. The dump down. Back to Maktar Injai. Not much arc on that shot. Cleared by me to Wojciechowski. He leaves it for Cable for three. Good check out by Injai. You notice that NJ ended up with the jumper, Tim. They did a nice job. It wasn't Jackson or King at the end. That's what seems to be happening. The wrong guy occasionally getting it for a wide open look. Screen away, back cut. Beautiful play by Jackson. Parks rejects him. Back up again. Finally, Capel runs it down. He is good without the ball, Ray. Parks Look looks shit. low to me, and that'll be a push on Gerard Ward. Easy post up, though, and a good look from up top. Opening moments of the second half have been scintillating as Michigan leads Duke. You're from the elite main line of Shreveport, Fairfield Avenue, but in your neighborhood, they don't get down and dirty like this. This is two tough competitors and a sensational understanding and feel for the game by Dugan Fife and they send it in by a relaxed Jimmy King. Six point lead for the Wolverines. Chris Collins in the game after the timeout. I think Newton or Parks, either one. Cherokee Parks will be tagged. Did you notice the quick release by Chris Collins? Uh, just to getting the feel too, we noted the understanding of new players. It's tough sometimes in the game's turkey jerky. You feel you can provide the lift and therefore you stroke it quickly. Oh, there's the Quinn Snyder banging to the floor by Wojo. That's the key that this is a big defensive set for Duke. Michigan still looking for that first three-pointer of this half. King with the dribble drive. Oh, oh Jimmy release. has been oh. the king and his court here in the second half. He no, has 10 in the game. No king I know of had a little jump hook at the end of a bounce. Pretty. Langdon. Loose ball, run down by Newton. Langdon again, now what, that's his spot. What confidence. When you move off the wing with Langdon and get that extra room, a little more diagonal with that perimeter jumper, that's the one that usually has the best rotation. I think he's got a lot of spots is what you're saying. Mitchell with a pull up, Langdon brings it down. Michigan doesn't have to be in a hurry. Don't settle quickly unless a real easy one shows. Play your own and don't let him turn the corner. Wojciechowski is setting up a little isolation. A little stagger stack. One high, one low. For Langdon. Good call, huh, by the bench. Ride him. King getting his fair share of rebounds as well. Good call here. That'll be a block on Collins. That's the
the experience you've alluded to. You see it crack. You know you're not going to get the hook if a mistake occurs. You also know you can blow by the initial defense, get an angle on the stepping in Duke basketball team who loves to pick up the charge. Now you see the team fouls. Now the reason we're showing those folks is that Mike Krzyzewski wants his club to understand the foul situation. Don't get in the way. Seventh foul early. You want to be able to shoot as many fouls as the other team is held in check. Blake knee to Collins. Ooh. Rejected, but no foul. And Chris can't believe it, and neither can Mike Krzyzewski. Well, down low, there was a bang. But good use and protection of the ball by Chris Collins. Well, you have to like the idea, though, too. Uh, you don't hit the perimeter jumper, take it inside and try to get an easy one. Blake, what a baseline move. A little stutter step. A stop and go by Blakeney. Now, you were taught never give up the baseline, I'm sure, because you're that old. <laughs> this club, MJ is the one that's supposed oh, to shut no, off no, the no, trap. No, he goes up no. to the nine, never has vision on the basketball, so Jimmy King has egg. It's certainly not his fault. He's looking for that support, which never arrived. Blakeney will get to the line. Jimmy King will take a well-deserved rest. His mom and dad are here. You know, they are going to make, Jimmy King Sr. and his lovely wife, they're going to make 25 of his games this year. They want the senior season to be Going special. out with a bang. Isn't that great? Awfully proud of them. And even in the first year, people were saying, Weber, obviously, Juwan, and Jalen. I always like King in terms of the next level of basketball. He's a solid performer, understands the game. And is a wing, a small or a big small forward or a big guard. Duke is now 4 of 11 at the line. Not a good pass here by Crawford. Out of bounds. It'll be controlled to the Blue Devils. Uh, Bobby, a good shooter just in the game. you got to make a catchable delivery. Steve Fisher has got to be pleased, Bill, with his low post defense of uh, Meek mm -hmm. Parks when he's out there. And now, of course, Greg Newton's on the floor. They have not allowed the easy baskets inside. There have been a few open shots on the perimeter. Mm -hmm. But they have clearly taken away Duke's low post. Good, good, strong support in there. And I mentioned Crawford. He just came off that knee injury. You see Pete got that. Mike Krzyzewski. Tommy Amaker, not a bad point guard down there. And Mike Bray. A couple, couple of guys whose names always seem to crop up in the coaching <laughs> yeah. stakes. Mike Bray had a, a real opportunity at the Auburn job, thought better of it, and of course Cliff Ellis is now there. That's a nice mix. Pete Gadet, of course, uh, one of the lieutenants. They love to see me, you know, got that. And Krzyzewski, both of them used to beat me up pretty good. There is Jackson, a little out of control, and Langdon brings it down for Duke. Force the issue with the dribble. Here's your post defense, Baston. Mark's getting the blow. They got to be solid now. Look for more of a perimeter game. Michigan's defense now spreading out the Duke offense. I think they're being patient too. Make sure they get a good look as it goes to nine. There you see the shot clock winding down. Oh. A steal by Mitchell. Give it up. Maceo Baston. Oh, exclamation. Maceo. 51-46. I'd say that sprain knee is okay. Great recovery. He went to Lourdes at halftime. <laughs> he does have some unbelievable easy dunks. Solid. There's a good day again. Now Baston with the overplay, causing the turnover. Crawford. And that'll be over the back against Maurice Taylor. As Langdon had position, that's the third foul on Maurice Taylor. Well, if you're going to run a break, run a good one, Timmy, and get a good shot. And that time Michigan did everything great defensively. The deflection turns the other way. And he did an awfully tough release at the end of it. Just extraordinary. The three-quarter deflection turn, Bastin, and then he takes off too. Now, right here, I thought they could have gotten more out of this than going against the 6'10 guy with a little baby hook. Maybe a kick back to the trailer and let that guy finish. Cherokee Parks has re-entered the oh. ball game for Duke. Me. Yes. And a foul. Taylor may 
have just picked up his fourth. He did. That is a very important play, not only because Meek gets to the line for three, but because Taylor gets his fourth foul. Well, the confidence to go to Meek, you can see the gamble. At some point, you've got to say, I can't get there, but the angle of the pass, much better. Number four on Maurice Taylor. And defensively, the judgment faulty as he checks with Jimmy Giggs. See, that's where upperclassmen help him. Tell him what he did wrong. Understand your numbers out there. And all of a sudden, team foul number five. So a little story. Duke's problems at the line continue. Four of 12 at the free throw line. And, uh, you know, you, you look out there, and Cherokee Parks is back on the floor. You wonder when Steve Fisher makes the move to get Jimmy King back Number into the game. 32. Because it was Carolina shortly after Warren. Parks got he out that uh, Steve over. Fisher decided to give Jimmy King a rest. I think part of it, we mentioned that baseline dribble against Jimmy King and NJ didn't help. I think what happened to Jimmy was he was a little fatigued as we take a shot of him. So a little blow, getting ready for stretch time. As long as they can hold on to the lead. NJ touched it last. It will be controlled to do. So on the floor for the Blue Devils, Mike Krzyzewski has Cable, Parks, Meek, Chris Collins, and Kenny Blakeney. And Collins operating at the point. Boy, both coaches are going to love looking at this game. Just a correct, nice little pull up by Chris. And his outside shot really abandoned him in March of last year. And of course, uh, the setback with the broken bone in his foot has mm -hmm. not helped early this year. Makes for a herky-jerky start. Look at the Chief out on the floor with the flashy Gerard Ward. Folks, look at the post defense, too. Meek does step in and pick up the charge on the drive. Jackson, nice look to Inja. Offensive board work for Ward. Good hustle by Jackson again. Staying with it. Out of bounds, off Parks. Now that's part of the philosophy by Parks. If you can't get it, slap it away. Slap it out, maybe you'll get a break the other way. Michigan wants this game desperately. The offensive board work is a good illustration. Assistant coach, all of those points for Michigan coming inside. And a lot of activity. Jackson, one of them, as well as the bigger guys. Duke has to close that down. Everybody's got a rebound. You can see the little mix back by Duke. Some inside with tips and follows. And yet maybe absent the three-pointer to stretch that day. Out of bounds playing. Lightning with some pressure. Gerard Ward to deal with. Now he should take him to the box and try and get Ward though. They do, they're switching that exchange. Here comes King. Capel with a steal opportunity, and that left Jackson the opportunity to find Crawford, but he could not finish. Look at the new guard for Duke. Capel on the floor now with Blakeney, Collins, Meek, and Hart. Maybe a little of their top of the key and box offense. They screen away and usually pop up. Park setting some screens. Trying to allow Cable to get free. And he did. Good defense again by Enjai this time. Blakeney with the shot clock winding down. Parks. Oh, what a stroke. I mean, he is so confident, but the drift out to get a passing lane was what made the play. Good read. Duke down by only one. Too easy. Tried too hard to create the foul. Killed himself with the bounce. Parks looks to Collins. Good ball fake. What a move by Collins. A little left hand leaner in the lane. Hatzel with the defender on his right. Good release. Duke nice. has the lead by one. Patience right now. King and Jackson have to do something. Composed. This is a 10-2 spurt as the Cameron Crazies rise to attention. Not a good one. You want to take over, but within the system. Reverse the ball, make your cut, get yourself a little closer to the hole. King is back on the floor for the Wolverines. Bobby Crawford, number 31 in goal. Ray Jackson, Injai, and Gerard Ward. There's the weave for the first time. A little slip pass, pretty play. Meek draws the foul again as Injai reached in. And uh, remember this. Maurice foul Taylor foul forced to lead the game with four foul fouls. Injai. And as soon as Taylor left the floor, the run began for Duke. 
the inside a little bit more open. And Jai's got to be more active. LaSalle with Tom Goley used to use the weave. Here it is again with Mike Krzyzewski. A student of the game. The little slip and nice read by Eric Meek. That is a factor though. You need the, the rotation Eric now. The of Taylor pounds on one end, is aggressive on the other. That could be a problem the next nine minutes. And also, 16 fouls. And four on Injai, who's in the game for Taylor. So, And three for Duke. Eric Meek to the strike for the Blue Devils. Have not had good fortune at the line tonight. They are now 6 of 13 as a team. 50%, 7 of 14. And their lead is out to 3. This is now a 12-2 run for the Blue Devils. Well, Jackson's so good at getting free. Doesn't finish, but good without the ball. Good reaction by the Duke defense, too. Capel out for Collins. Got five airborne. Can't get it to go. Injai clears. It'll be interesting to see, Bill, in this sequence, if King and or Jackson decide to go one-on-one -on -one because they've done that the last couple of times down. Well, Mitchell's an offensive mind out there. Not afraid to take shots. There he goes. Right on cue. Jackson on the glass. Most of his points have come by the offensive board work, the putback opportunities for Ray Jackson. Now here's Jackson again. Nobody on him. Good play by Fife and the bang by Newton. He's he relentless. He does the flop, doesn't he? This telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated and intended solely for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without the prior written permission of Raycom is forbidden. The ability to find people, something Michigan's done a better job, but Jackson's so good without the ball. And they were teasing Newton about being in the Worldwide Wrestling Foundation because of his cameos, his flops, his theatrics. And there is one there, but trying to help and support or shore up the dig. Michigan is 0 for their last 10 from the floor. 8-15 and counting in the ballgame. Lazy pass could have been picked off. Thrown by Mitchell. Dugan Fife operates against Price. And when the ball gets inside, Duke does a pretty good job containing the post offensive man. King has it taken away. Price fouled by Dugan Fife. A slip and they're in the passing lane. Steve Fisher knows it. He's seen it for a while. Not a bad run against Big Ten teams by Duke in the last three years. Absolutely. And now it's one and one time the rest of the way for Duke as Michigan has committed their seventh team foul. To 13 in a row? Yeah. Don't the... uh, they just don't lose in this building to any other opponent besides an ACC team. I mean, it's uh, now 91 and counting here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. And all the fans keep watching Ricky Price as the year progresses. Uh, this is a very talented individual. He's got excitement in his game, and a word that I often enjoy using or hearing, juice. He's got life out there, likes to play, invigorating to watch. You see that last home loss to a non-ACC team back in 83. That's the uh, days of five slamma jamma at Houston and Louisville. Of course, they hooked up in that final four, that tremendous semifinal that year when Louisville had uh, Never the McCrays. Yeah. That was uh, Rodney and Scooter yeah. McCray, those guys. Mm -hmm. and Jerry Eves was a leftover. Jerry now and Ned's yep. assistant. Right, Jerry Eves was a part of that team in 81 and 2 and left it for some power forwards of the Scooter McCray, Rodney McCray. Time. time up as Duke has made their way back to the lead at home in the friendly confines of Cameron. Commenting on the last time Duke lost in this building, Milt Wagner, Lancaster Gordon, a part of that backcourt that uh, followed Eves and company at Louisville as they got that victory. And you know, the thing I noticed most 
beyond the haircut of Denny Crum is the uh, the different uniforms. You got a little more leg back in those sure days. And the polyester look <laughs> as well. Yeah, these uh, pants, you can get in trouble wearing those in yeah. some neighborhoods. Billy Thompson, I think, too, on that yeah. count. A little pressure after the timeout. First look all ball game. Michigan handles it easily and with composure. Michigan at the seventh foul mark with eight minutes remaining. They've got two to go, but that's where I think Fife can help this team. And that's part of the Duke philosophy. Get you in trouble. They like to understand. They feel a little better, the foul situation. Wojciechowski, a little Marcus Haynes act before getting to the baseline. Look now he needs help, and he great. calls a timeout. Heady play, but great defense at a key period for the Wolverines. Really toughened it up, and they work at that. They could be very tough come March. Steve Fisher has to be pleased with what he's seen on the defensive end. Our Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Maceo send it in, set up by great hands, and then the quick turn from the D to the offense. And this is a glider, hang time, extraordinary impact jam. Michigan led this game 49 to 41. Duke reeled off a 15 to 2 spurt to get this lead, and what a nice rejection there by Bass. Oh, heads up play. Sight. Taylor back in the game, and he hits the deck, and he's hurt. His shoulder was completely turned. Not going to stop play. Good officiating. Did not hurt the Duke cause and uh, precaution, the most important aspect of the whistle. Well, a great concern now for the help of Maurice Taylor because that was a very ugly looking oh he's holding that yeah. hand in a well the arm and the shoulder were stretched completely out of a socket it appeared just in watching it live mm. well they have been competing on the glass Fife gets a good look he hasn't had a lot of opportunities but here both guys vying and you can just see Meek probably got a little bit of him as they fell to the floor in a clean fashion and this is a good sign though uh, the the, uh, the shoulder was really the right shoulder was turned in a direction that Maurice Taylor would certainly not like to have had it turned in and he's as he was going down to the floor you notice the, hand, the arm hanging to me yeah. Scott Perry out to check you, you, your concern is obviously for any portion of that limb the way he went to the hardwood. He was playing with five fouls. He had just come into the game because it was stretch run time for Michigan down by five with seven minutes to play. A true talented newcomer. Get better quick. He's got triple double written all over him by midseason. Now, Wojo and Fife are like two little flyweights. Willie Pep in his heyday. Jamming, sticking, running. A little Graziano and Tony Zale. That's a little too heavy for these guys. Price. That should have been good. They're saying on the way up. Mike Krzyzewski would argue. Uh, Jimmy Bird suggested no. And look at that screen off by Parks. Tell you what. Off the yes. backboard. Huh? On the way down, I yeah, thought. It was off the backboard. Mm -hmm. Capel, baseline pull up. That's the charge. Wave it off. Well, they had let Jeff Capel turn to the goal earlier in the game. And that time, ready defensively for Michael's guy. Terrific read. A sense of urgency on the defense by the Wolverines. Player control foul going cable that's his first and that was Bastard too yeah Maceo made it a very nice defensive show that time down on the low block they put price on now Fife to rag him a little bit a little quicker they shut up the passing lane they would have had something King now mismatched against Wojciechowski did you see where Meek forced the post guy out about 15 feet from the box King has to love this matchup 
just for the shot, but look at the help by Nate. Oh, what a look to Baston. He caught his own without a release. That should have been a one. Loose ball. Wojo comes up with it, saving it to Capel. And he comes up gingerly. Wojciechowski favoring his ankle. You're not getting him out, though. A pump there, huh? A ticker, some pineapple. You're right about Price. You know, you just you watch him out there on the floor and you wait for that explosion. Here's the little exchange on the baseline, trying to get him involved. A solo. He got it. You know, you just can tell that he has that step-up mentality. Jerry West at his best. The nice drive dribble by Fife. Kane throws up an air ball. And now Michigan getting close to being run out. Need a little indoor. Need some energy right here, Tim. This is now a 17-2 run in what has been a game of runs. The Wolverines are now 0 for 12 in this very long sequence for Duke's offense. As young as Wojo and Price are, they knew how to use the clock a little here. Look at this dribble draw. Capel. And the grab. Yep, on Baston. Prior to the shot. They're perplexing because you turn to assist. And as you turn, other guys get passing lanes. The kick out, all of a sudden, oh, here they come at you in a disadvantaged position. It's a great use of the floor and understanding how to value the dribble. A timeout. And the two parties begin to talk to one another as they head to their respective benches. The Blue Devils up by seven. Sprint assistant coach for Michigan. There have been a few empty trips. Yeah, they've had their difficulties occasionally with good defensive pressure stepped up, forcing them out. It's a case of them not being able to use the dribble as effectively as others. They need some perimeter help. I mean, uh -huh. they have not been hitting the perimeter jumper to help loosen that. Most of those shots that they're missing inside are because there are a few arms waving with Blue Devils uniforms on. Well, Duke has been using the dribble penetration to find people. And here's a guy, probably 12, 50, 1,300 on the boards, <laughs> came here to get measles. <laughs> it, has been a game style. Of, it has been a game of runs, Bill, and you wonder if Michigan has one left because Duke's runs have been 9 0, 11 2, 17 2 here in this second half run to seize the seven point lead. Michigan's runs were 9 0 and 24 0 mm -hmm. in the first half. So you begin to wonder does Michigan have anything left? With Maurice Taylor out of the game, I think that makes it awfully difficult. Not as much instant offense, but when Michigan dribble drives, guys are cutting into their way, and that's the timing that Steve Fisher alludes to, shooting on offense, whereas Duke has the ability to turn corner. They know where the two big guys and where their kick people happen to set up. Maurice Taylor has a sprained right wrist, but the good news is he's able to play. He is on the floor right now, number 23 in gold, down in the low block. Might as well use him, huh? And Jackson takes Capel low to see if they back screen and get Taylor in. Keen working on Blakeney. Crawford the dump down. Baston, an athletic move just to get it on the rim. What a great job by Meek forcing him under the glass. Collins on the floor with Capel, Blakeney, Meek, and Parks, and ACO Baston. Gets his third. Gets a little small change shoved, and they're addressing that. They're not letting you get away with it. He never got out and top. This is maybe a little bit of fatigue and not understanding. You've got the three-quarter. Get your body away. Use your foot speed, Maceo. Michigan's foul difficulty leading to Injai coming into the game to replace Maceo Maston and also putting Duke at the line. Where tonight they've been rather ineffective. But they are getting their opportunities. They're 9 of 17 as a team, and here's Parks. Cherokee, so much has been said and written about him. This is his 50th consecutive game tonight. Second in Duke history where blocks are concerned, coming in with 185. The questions were, could he play 
the similar role of Christian Leighton? Well, the answer to that was no, but he could play his way and have tremendous impact. Yeah, I think he's a better outside shooter than Christian at this stage. Great competitor, got rid of some weight, got rid of any bad weight, kept the good weight. And just able to step out and say, there's a good job by Meek, and that's what Michigan has to do on the post deep and ice spin out. Taylor, oh. Njai keeping it alive over the back. Njai, and I thought Michigan should have been going to the line on that move. Yeah, that's five on Nactar Njai. So he fouls out of the game. Gorgeous little job by Taylor. Njai ends up with the foul because they're unable to convert or go to the line. And right here you see Meek with the three-quarter. Just good basketball offensively. And I just think Park's got something of him from our distant seat. But the interior reaction, they come down, cave you under the glass to make it tough in your release. You make your first trip into Cameron Indoor Stadium. <laughs> It'll be something you'll never forget. I recall uh, Shaquille O'Neal coming in here with all of his numbers early on in his career. He felt that he could come in and quiet this crowd. Well, he had another thought coming as uh, they schooled him that day. And Maktar enjoying it now. He's laughing it off just a bit. And they're at 10, Timmy. Michigan still unable to get into the one-on-one, -on -one, so good value of the foul situation. By the way, how about those banners up there? Grote, Hurley, Leitner, Jaminski, Furry. Who do you think's missing? Spinarco. Jimmy Spinarco. That's, uh, that's the only name that, that I can say maybe deserves consideration. Well, it's probably based on donations, and that might, that might hurt Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> nice post to tell. Yeah, we'll get a call. <laughs> the alumni will be giving you a call. 335 and counting. Unbelievable success here, though. Bill Foster, his big boob is going back. His big work does the color for Pitt Radio now. Blakeney now operating at the point as Krzyzewski decides to utilize clock with each possession. A little milk time. Confidence in his bench, too. Good luck, huh? Pop out again, his ability to find the hole. You can't relax defensively now with the Chief. 14 for Cherokee. He's got one more arrow to utilize. Mitchell. I use that left arm as a shield. Willie Mitchell draws the foul. Look at that. This one will be retired at the end of the season. Tom Butters. One of the great people in athletics, huh? Jeff Mullins will be flying high shortly after this season. Cherokee Parks, of course. Uh, Soon to follow? Of, yep, he'll follow. They're going to run out of uniforms here. <laughs> Number 13, Willie Mitchell. Number 4-4. Four, four. He's starting to shoot the ball like Jerry West. It has been said many times when you're going out to try to find the head coach, you should not always look at their cumulative record. And the decision by Tom Butters to hire Mike Krzyzewski at a time when his record had been poor at Army. Well, are you suggesting the, that I may have had a shot, huh? <laughs> One of the better decisions ever made in intercollegiate athletics, oh. hiring this man. And uh, his record wasn't poor against me, yeah. or a lot of guys I know. He did very well there, Timmy. In a short time, he's become the standard by which coaching greats are measured. Dugan Fife coming into the game. Well, Larry Donald voted him coach of the decade. Well, Larry knows his hoops. Well, he has, you know, no, nobody to argue with him. He runs the, <laughs> the paper. Larry Donald is the uh, publisher of basketball time. A nice job by Michigan now trying to create something, and they thought they did with that trap and block. Blakeney leaves it for Langdon, and they'll run clock. 2.40 and counting. Shot clock at 15. And fresh legs in there with Wojo at the point. Collins and Blakeney. Good close down. Parks finds a seam. That'll be a block. Beautiful use of the bounce. And that's all because he's widened his game. He's got new horizons. He got to hug him on the deep shot. And now the spread enables him. Look at the weak, the help here. You just can't get over because you got to hug the shooters. It's such a dilemma. 
the late step in gets the chief to the foul line. Ray Jackson picked up that first goal. Two and five will take a seat. Michigan hung on 51 points for some time. That last drought after losing Maurice Taylor. And Mike made a lot of points in the few minutes we had with him. And one was his second team makes them work harder. His group really gets after them, and that's helpful. The other one was Vic Rubis told him, and Steve Fisher not checking the clock, what can we do? The quick hitters at the other end. Vic Rubis said, you know, to he and Mickey Krzyzewski, coaching is a state of dissatisfaction. After the game is over, you worry about the next one. Now you need your quick hitters and get your defense ready. Go to the... Great help by Meek. Eric Meek knocking it away, and Ray Jackson will trigger it in. Are you talking about a complimentary player that has stepped forward as an impact player in a very short span of time? And he's going to receive a lot of compliments the way he's playing. Inside out for the three, or go to the box and get to the foul line. See now, there you go. Look Taylor. at the help by Mojo. Uh, Taylor's wrist, as we mentioned, sprained. Wojo over trying to assist. Wojciechowski. That's his first foul. Hard to believe that you can play the kind of pressure defense that that perimeter plays for Coach K and only have one foul with 2.06 remaining. As you say, Price coming into the game and Eric Meek gets a nice round of applause from the faithful as he takes the seat. I think he made a good decision, Eric Meek, playing this year. What do you think? I do too. To give Newton some time to develop. Uh, questions always will be uh, raised about recruiting and who might be the next. I mean, let's face it, it's been that way since Danny Ferry. Mm -hmm. Who would be the next Danny Ferry? Uh, Christian Leitner. Who would be the next Christian Leitner? Well, he's not Leitner, but he's close. He's got his own game, Cherokee Park. He treats each year in a unique fashion. He approaches it with the same, a different vigor, a different outlook. And what's behind has transpired. Let's move ahead. Fife coming back into the game. Some offensive and defensive substitutions now being made for the Wolverines, who are only down seven. But when you watch their offense, it seems like a much larger lead than seven at this point. A nice shot by Steve Fisher. Almost came up one with one on the step in. The post guy able to turn, blind in that time, and bring it over the timeline. If you're not, you don't, you shouldn't foul now. Just play heads up. Wojciechowski blowing right past Crawford. Collins stepping in to knock it away. Dugan Fife with eight on the shot clock. Good read by Fife. Number See, a lot of times clubs will play good defense. All of a sudden it gets down to 10 seconds. They'll foul. Well, ride that one out if you're not going to give it real early. Crawford has re-entered the game. Fife is out. Steve Fisher likes to have him on the floor from a defensive standpoint. And again, they're taking care of some perspiration on the floor. Foul problems and herky-jerky sometimes on offense may have been the problem for in Michigan. In the second half, I think the loss of Taylor at the time they lost mm -hmm. him was very significant. Sure was. I and mean, he would just come back into the game with the five fouls. And he was a, a major factor in that 24-0 run that gave Michigan the lead. Tough shot. Turn around, won't go. Got to use good judgment. I mean, they, they got a double. You got to find somebody. You may have had a three on a ball reversal. Turn and look opposite the key. What's funny about the hand check, and late in the game, they're not called this much. You notice? After concentrating on it early, not a good crossover in traffic. Give it up. One down. Taylor tries to solo. Is not what Steve Fisher wanted. Uh, he looked like Jimmy Taylor going through the line on that one. Got to be careful in the open floor. Tried to look like Taylor Coleman in the middle of the floor. Well, you have to foul. Steve Fisher's asking his team to foul. And at this stage, they're not. And well, they finally do, and fortunately, not making the intention. But that's that communication. Without Fife on the floor, nobody able to get organized with the thinking of the bench. Look at Brian Dutcher, who was worried about, as well as Steve Fisher, 
the dribble penetration of Mike Krzyzewski's club. By the way, you see that pin on the lapel of Mike Krzyzewski. During the course of highlights during NBA games, or if you happen to see a Portland game, you'll notice P.J. Carlissimo wearing that same pin. That is a B pin. It looks like a check mark from a distance, but that's in honor of the memory of Jim Valvano, the B Foundation and the research group put together to raise money for cancer research. Coach K loved Jimmy V. Pays his respects, wants people to remember the cause of cancer and the money that is needed. We'll be back. Has exhausted their time on allotment, so they'll have to foul and do the best that they can. The Wolverines are one of their last 19 from the floor. Coach K experienced the same thing. He had a nine minute, 15 second drought that really allowed Steve Fisher's crew to surge to that lead prior to halftime. Uh, you can, and I, you've seen them play early in the year, Michigan. You can see an improvement in this basketball oh, team, though. No doubt about Th it. This is one of the tougher arenas and in the country to come in and keep your composure. I thought they did during that run. Don't ever doubt what Steve Fisher can accomplish during the course of the long haul of any season. I think many of you would agree that not many people felt Michigan last year would go as far as they did. Mm -hmm. And they did it with defense and that attitude, that winning attitude. They are a national program now. You see more Michigan jerseys around this country and other states than any other jersey. And there's a reason for that. Well, it's a national image, yeah. just like the Duke program. Big thing you mentioned was defense. That's what these young guys have to kind of dribble drive. One of the few times they've gotten that close with it. Kick out, he got three. King stays with it. But the three-point shot has not been there. Duke and Fife may have to launch a few in the days and weeks ahead. And there's a turnover. Parks says it's my fault. Under the basket, too, so you might get a little pop-out quick hitter. Boy, look at that face from Coach K. Very unhappy with that pass. And Duke has been careless with the basketball. 19 turnovers for them, so a lot to be learned for both of these clubs in a December intersectional matchup. Now see what kind of screens they run here. They got to get free, catch, and deliver. Skip pass. Good cross court. Crawford. Not there. Jackson on the glass. They stepped out. Uh, let me say it. On the end line. Goes over to Duke. Tough gather in that particular angle. But they had a chance there. Knock that one down. Get it to four. And the giveaway quickly by Willie Mitchell. I thought it was very interesting, our conversation today with Steve Fisher and talking about uh, the memories of the original Fab Five and dealing with the pressure coming from the press and the image that this Michigan program now has yet another Fab Five. He has to enjoy what the accomplishments of the Weber, Jawan Howard era and what they were and what they meant to the program, but he certainly wants to get rid of any idea that this group is of similar stock. Oh, he said Weber was the guy that could take over. And obviously, Rose and Jawan Howard joined in, but earlier we talked about all of these guys will start these new freshmen. They are not those. He said it was unique. They could all come together and start. So it is a different set of circumstances. And as we talked about, Duke, you're finding a new identity with each year. King launches for three. Parks brings it down. Mike Krzyzewski's record against Michigan in his last six attempts, five and one. Team. The eye contact. It's just extraordinary. The interplay, the reaction. Well, he's a player's coach, a coach's coach, uh, the, the entire package. Mm -hmm. The inner toughness, too, that is transferred by their staff to their ball club. 148 consecutive weeks in the AP poll. Dominant program. Pleasure to be me. Always iron unkind. <laughs> well, there were times the iron was unkind for both of these clubs. 
a game of runs ends with Coach K notching its fifth victory of the year. The Pizza Hut College Basketball Tip-Off was brought to you by Pizza Hut, where great food and fun times bring people together. By Buick and your local dealers. Remember Buick, the new symbol for quality in America. And by Sprint. We've got everything you need, local, long distance, and cellular, to let you be there now. The number nine Blue Devils of Duke knock off number 23 Michigan 69-59 before a capacity crowd at Cameron Indoor Stadium. For Bill Raftery, Tim Brando saying so long, this has been a copyrighted presentation of Raycom.